Okay, let's try that again. I think my microphone wasn't connected well. All right. So we're going to be starting with getting results in business in just a minute. We're doing our last class in the series. We're doing a free speaking activity, a game, where we put together everything we've learned in the unit into one activity. We'll be talking about that in just a moment, minute. But first, I'm John Eric, your Verbling teacher for this hour. And I'm an American teacher from New York hanging out from Lisbon, Portugal to bring you this class. And here are three quick rules to help you participate in my class. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. And that means when you're not speaking, please turn your microphone off so that we can keep the classroom as quiet as possible. Rule two, tune in to the new words that you're going to learn and use them as actively as you can throughout the class. And rule three, open up to your classmates. Just relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. And that is enough of that. Let's get started. So today what we're going to do is take everything we've learned and put it together in one big speaking activity. So what you can do, I'm going to share my screen with you in just a minute. Let's get my camera in the right place. Uh, however, if it's difficult to see the screen, you can go to our notes, which I've already put for you in the chat window. If you click on that link at the Verblink chat, you get to this document. Let me share my screen just to show you what I mean. You'll see the graphic getting results in business when you open it. And then I've got some news about Anki flashcards. We can talk about that in just a minute. OK, and then you scroll down to Table of Contents, click on Unit 11, Business Decisions. Boom, that takes you to today's class, which is on page 3. So this way, you can make it larger if you have trouble seeing the cards. OK, and any new vocabulary I'll be adding as well to page 3 from our vocabulary list. So let's get started. Let me share my screen for the board. Let's see if I can get to some right place. There we go. All right. So before we begin, let's see, we've got some people coming in. Okay, there we go. We've got three. Three is better than nothing. <laughs> Let me say hello to returning champions and heroes, Yuki and Monica. Nice to have you back. We, we are always with you. <laughs> Don't may, may the force be with you. Um, and Anton, how are you? I'm fine. Thank hello, you, Anton. Mark. Hello, can you hear Anton. me? Turn on your microphone. I've already turned it on. You can hear me? Anton, are you the are you the Anton that I know from before? Yes, I can hear you. Are you the Anton that I already know, or are you? Oh, I don't think Anton? so. I'm the uh, first time in your class. Okay, okay, you're a new Anton. Anton, where are you from? I'm from St. Petersburg, Russia. Oh, okay, very good. So yes, you are definitely a new one. Well, Anton, let's do this. Before we start to play the game, I'm going to go over a little bit of vocabulary that we've done. This will be a reminder for Monica and Yuki, but it will be new for you. So let me go over here. These are some of the key expressions that we've used throughout the unit that we've done so far, because remember, this is actually the last class in the previous unit, and we're going to start a new unit tomorrow. But let's take a look at some of the key vocabulary. I'll try to make my screen a little bit bigger. Hold on. Let's see if I can make it a bit bigger. OK. So what you're going to do is just fill in the blanks with some of the key vocabulary. Um, no, first we're going to start on the left side. Sorry. So. Let me just think, what am I going to do first? No, 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 no. We're going to start on the right <laughs> with the key vocabulary. That's what we're going to do. Onslow Publications has its own restaurant, its own staff restaurant, run by Onslow employees for years as a way of cutting costs. Managers are having, are having a meeting to discuss subcontracting their catering services to an outside company, complete their discussion with words from the list. The list is the red vocabulary at the top. And what we're going to do is put in some of the key vocabulary that we use 
if we're having a discussion. And we're going to use this in the game that we're going to play. So for example, at the top of the screen, you can see that Simon says, personally, I think we should take this opportunity to cut our costs, personally. So this means that Simon is giving his personal opinion. So let's see if we can fill in the rest of the key vocabulary. And the idea here is once you know it, you can use it in the decision-making game that we're going to play. All right? So, Anton, why don't you take the first one for us? This is Bob. Okay. Yeah. Well, I agree with Simon. Let's face it, it's a luxury we can afford. I agree. And let's face it, it's a luxury we can afford. Very good. And Monica, what does Rupert say in response? I take your... Yeah, read I the whole your. thing. Okay, I take your, but we entertain important guests in the old typesetter's room, and that really impresses them. So I take your what? Maybe I take you your... Think. Well, let's, let's, let's look at the context for a minute. In this meeting, they're trying to figure out how to basically how to make a good impression on their, on their guests in the meeting. So w Rupert is suggesting that they have the, the reception in this special room because it looks decorative or something like that. Rupert is saying that he understands Bob. He understands what Bob is saying, but he doesn't agree. Then maybe point. <laughs> exactly. I take your point. In other words, I understand you, but I have a different opinion. I take your point. It means I understand you. That's it. And Yuki, what about Doris? What does she think? Dor uh, Doris, the blank is it, it not just a question of money. Blank, I see it. We should, we should treat, treat everybody the, the, the same. Some kitchen, some kitchen stuff, some kitchen stuff, stuff have been with with us for twenty years. Uh, the the point is, um, it it's not just a question of money. Um, as as I see it, we should treat everybody everybody the same. Okay. You can say the point is, it's okay. No. But the, you can, it's possible. But there's something else you could say. Because, yeah. because Monica used point. We, uh, should, yes. we should try so, not to use it again. That thing with. Right. The thing is, it's not just the question of money. It means the point is. As I see it, meaning the way I see it, we should treat everyone the same. It, it's the same as, uh, as, long as, as long as I see. As long as is different. different. Because, because as long as means for the period of time. And as I see it means in the manner that I see it. Oh. Right? Okay. So, so as long as you're doing that, you know, for this period of time that you're doing it, or because you're doing it, as long as you're doing it, I'm going to do something else. Because you're doing that, I'm going to do something else. As I'm doing it, that means more like since I'm, yeah, you know what? I'm giving bad examples because <laughs> in that case, in that case, they both mean because. Just but anyway. As I see it. Yeah, but just as I see it, it tends to mean the way, the way I'm doing it or the way I see it. Anyway, the answers are correct. And Going back to Anton, right. Going back to Anton. Yes. What does Hamish respond? Uh, absolutely, I think. Absolutely. If they lose their jobs, they'll never find another one. Right. Remember, the meeting is about subcontracting a catering service because they have kitchen staff but they're going to save money if they replace the staff with a catering service. So that's what they're debating. So Hamish, does he agree or does he disagree with Doris, Anton? 
Uh, your answer is correct, but does he agree with Doris or does he disagree? Wait a second. Doris says, the thing is, it's not just a question of money. As I see it... Uh, he's agree with Doris. Right? Hamish agrees. It's yes. not just a question of money. They have to be loyal to their staff. Okay, very yes. good. And Monica, back to Bob. Um, come on, Hamish. Come on, Hamish. This is a business, not an OIP people as home. Come on, Hamish. <laughs> Why do you care about your staff? Okay. And Simon, Yuki? Uh, Simon, if I understand you, Blank, Doris, you don't want to change any, anything. Is that right? If I understand you correctly. Correctly, correct. Mm -hmm. Doris, you don't want to cha change anything. Is, it, is that right? Okay, good. And Anton, Rupert says? Yes. Uh, well, we won't reach a decision today. Let's review the situation in six months. So are we all agreed? Fantastic. Good. Let's move on to the next item on the agenda. Okay. And so that's a model for how we can have our business meeting. This, these keywords. So you might want to keep this. Uh, actually, do I have this in your notes? I don't think I do. Uh, I maybe I can quickly put these in your notes as well. Hang on just a second here. One moment. I'm going to add this exercise to the notes on page three as well, which will, which will be underneath the game board. Okay, so you'll have a copy there. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, it's there. So this will be on page four of your notes if you want to have a copy. All right, and one last thing, which is... On the right side, it asks us to correct the sentences and phrases. For example, accordingly to Roger, we should open another branch. But it should be according to Roger. Right? So we're going to correct the form of the word in, in each of these examples. Um, hang on just a minute here. One moment. Right. OK. So we're back to Monica for number two. I am I am not quite sure about that. Okay. So Sorry. The, the problem here is that look at the way the word is spelled, Monica. Look at the way the word is spelled. And say it again. Quiet. <laughs> it's not it's it's quiet. Quiet. Right? Quiet. I'm not quite sure about that. But what should it be, Monica? Quiet means silence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's the mistake in number two? The thing is, I don't know which words can I use in this exercise. The word that you said was correct. But the word that's written is incorrect. The word you said was quite. It's correct. But the word that's written is quiet. So obviously, the mistake is in the spelling of the word. How do you spell quite, Monica? Q. Right. U. 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 Mm hmm. A. I, like igloo. E. Nope. And, no, no, I don't know. Q U I T E. Q U I T E. Not, not quiet, which is Q U I E T. Okay. Take a look in the chat window where uh -huh. Yuki wrote quite for you. Mm -hmm. Take a look. Okay, so this is an awareness exercise. In other words, when you read that sentence, your brain 
fills in the right word automatically. Oh, it's quite, because that's the expression. And you're right. But the word that's written is quiet, so this is meant to make you more aware of a tricky word. Quite and quiet can be easily confused. Is that clear? Yes, yes. OK, thank you. Yeah. So I'll, I'm just going to write one more thing here. Quiet means silent. And sorry, quiet means silent. And quiet means something like very much. It's kind of an intensifier. So I made a little note there too. Quiet versus quiet. Quiet, quiet versus quiet. All right. Let's try one more here. Um, we're on to Yuki. Number three, can you spot the mistake? Yes, I'm hearing what you say. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm listening what you say. No? If you're in a, if you're in a meeting and you're, you're in the moment, usually you, we would use the present continuous. But this is a fixed expression in the language. So we don't use the present continuous. So it's not a question of what word to use. It's I hear. I hear you. I hear what you say. Exactly. I hear what you are saying. So I hear is what a you fixed. Are yeah. I hear. I hear what you are saying. You are saying. Okay. And and you could say I hear what you say. That's okay too. That's okay, okay too. But the point is, I hear, not I'm hearing. It's a fixed expression in the language. Okay. Okay. And okay. Anton. What about number four? This is another expression. It's written, yes, enough, fair. Mm -hmm. The right uh, would be, yes, fair enough. Right. It's another expression. Yes, fair enough. In other words, I agree with your point. OK, Monica, number five. As far I am concerned. What's missing? There's a missing word. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> Yuki, what's the missing word? As, as, far, <laughs> as far I'm concerned, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned. Missing word? Missing word. As far as, as far as I'm concerned. Correct. Look in the chat window, Monica. We're missing one of the as words. In other words, not as far I'm concerned, but as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So this is another expression, fixed expression. Okay? okay? And I think we're back to Anton for, where are we? For number six, the last one. Uh, that's, fun. that's fine to me. Mm -hmm. And what's the mistake? Can you spot the mistake? Maybe for me. That's fine. For me, there's an even better one. For me, that's fine? No, no, no. <laughs> Not the word order. The word. So instead of for, there's a better choice. Not for and not to, but another preposition, Anton. Mm -hmm. With me. With me. It, Exactly. Look in the chat window. So that's fine with me. It's probably the best choice, using with instead of to. Mm -hmm. Clear? Yes. OK, fantastic. So this was just to remind you, if you were in the classes before, some of the key expressions that we looked at. These expressions came from the business communication skills part, where we looked at, where we were listening to a business meeting, and then we had a short meeting of our own. Okay, so that was. Uh, a, a, can I yeah. say uh, in such a way? Uh, it's a fine for me to that. For me. Uh, yes, in this, this case, for me. It 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 is that it, it is fine for me to to but, join the class today. But here, I think the, they say with because you're just agreeing with someone, right? Uh, does, or, does everyone agree? Well, it's fine with me. In other words, yes, I agree. If you say it's fine for me, that's what we call the instrumental case in English. Uh, you know, like languages like Russian, I believe. 
I'm not 100% sure, but I think Russian has the instrumental case as well, which comes from like Latin. So in other words, for means to do something. Uh, oh, no, actually, sorry, it's not instrumental. Instrumental would be by. It could be by or for. In other words, the context is a little different. Mm. It's fine for me if you do the shopping because I'm going to do the budget. It's fine for me. It's like you're doing something as a favor to me. So it's kind of a different context. Whereas it's fine with me just means, yes, I agree. So in a business context where everyone has to agree, I think it's better just to say with. If you say it's fine for me, everyone will understand you. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. But I think, it's a, I think that's what they're trying to stress here. So this is really about awareness of details, this little exercise. So it's not a bad exercise. All right. Let's see if we can put this into practice now. So on your screens here, in the last class, we began this game. So we started it. Uh, we have different people, so I think we're probably going to start over. But our main goal here is to use some of those key expressions and everything we know about conditionals. Actually, Monica, you might have been in the last class as well. Can't remember. Yes. Uh, okay. So we'll we'll see if we can pick up where we left off in that case. Okay, Monica, why don't you read the background for us? What kind of meeting are we going to have in this game? Could you read for us? Yes. Work in a small groups. You work at the Centre Bank, a British bank with branches in the most towns and cities. All of your call centres are based in the UK in areas of high unemployment. You must make a series of decisions which will affect the future of these call centres. Work together and make your first decision by choosing option A or B. Start at first. Follow the in instructions. Okay, so if it's difficult to see these cards, remember I've put them in the notes as well. So you just go to page three of the notes and you can make the page bigger or smaller as you like. And I'll try to make it bigger on my screen, but it's a little bit difficult. I'll give it a try. Hold on. Maybe that's a little bit easier to see. All right, I think we might want to. Well, actually, why don't we pick up where we left off? Anton, you weren't here, but let's pick up where we left off. Yuki, why don't you read the first card and, and just summarize the decision that we made? Let's see how far we got. So go, go for it. Uh, first card, senior management want, want you to cut costs and improve profi profitability in India call center work workers are paid five times less than in the UK. You decide to A. Keep the call centers in the UK and accept higher costs. B. Invest in investigate more fully the cost and benefits of move moving the call centers. So, so in we the have to share. We ha you go, <laughs> yes, go ahead. Go ahead. In the, in the nutshell, uh, you have to uh, select uh, two options uh, from two options. Uh, one of two options. Uh, one is you you uh, you keep your call center in the UK uh, to uh, and tell to, us to using, a, using your, the second conditional UK. What are the what what do you think the results will be of each decision? We've already made this decision in the previous class, but remind us using the second conditional, would, could, should, might, ought to, using the second conditional, what do you think the results would be of each decision? So uh, if we kept the call centers in the UK, what would, could, should, might, or ought to happen? Uh, of course, uh, decision calls a big influence on the local workers in the UK. The, the decision the, would have would uh, have a big influence. Second condition. The, the, the decision would have a, a big influence on the life of uh, local workers 
uh, with you in in the U in the UK, uh, um, or uh, their destiny uh, depend on your de decision. Destiny, uh, destiny. I don't think destiny. They, no, they their are, future. They are, their the future, future. <laughs> right? Their future depend on your your, your decision, uh, but to company, uh, but your com company uh, have a, uh, your company should cut the cost uh, of uh, cut the cost of call call center in the UK. Uh, 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 pay. Payment of to the local worker is quite high, so it it uh, to, so moving call center to India uh, mm, enable mm, uh, would change would reduce the cost uh, high, very very much. <laughs> would okay, would, yeah, it would. It would reduce. It would cut down on the costs, basically. It would cut, cut down, down on the costs. Cost. By the way, before before we go on, let me just remind you one important thing here. Look at the notes on page three. I'll share my screen. Hopefully, you can see this. Okay. Look on the top of page three under class class eight decision game. And I'm just reminding you the form of the second conditional in red and yellow there. The second conditional is if plus past plus would, but you can sometimes replace would with could, should, might, or ought to, depending on what you mean. So you you said if we keep the call centers in the UK, or sorry, if we don't keep the call centers in the UK, it would have a, a deep impact. On the on the future of the company and on the workers themselves, they're going to lose their jobs. It would have a serious effect. It would have. If you right? could move your off your call center to India, it right. would it would cut cut the cost. Uh, exactly, it would cut the cost. Okay, so just to remind everyone that when we talk to, about an imaginary present. When we're, we're imagining scenarios that could happen today or the near future. It's always this form: if plus past plus would, and perhaps could, should, might, or ought to. Instead of the past, instead of saying if we moved, Yuki's second example, what he just said, is a good is a good illustration too. We could also use could instead of the past. Well. If you if you could move them to India, it would cut the costs. Why can we put could in the first part of the sentence? Because could is the past of can. So it counts. It is the past as well. So another version of this, I should put a little note here. Let me do that. Is we can use could. We can use could in the first part. If could is the past of can, then we can use could and would in the second part. Okay, so that's an alternative for you. There's a few others, but that's good enough for today. Okay. Oh, sorry, I spelled could wrong. Typo. So if I moved the call center, it would cut costs. If we could move the call center, it would cut costs. So those are two forms of the second conditional that we need to practice. Okay, hopefully that's clear. And let me put the game board back on screen. Can I okay, and you, one? sure, go for what it. What does it mean, ought to? It ought seems to. like have to. No, 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 ought to is, is a less strong version of have to. Mm -hmm. Have to is pretty neutral. You have to brush your teeth before you go to bed, right? Because you will get cavities if you don't. So it's general belief. It's an obligation, but a general belief. But if I say, you ought to brush your teeth five times a day, that's my personal feeling. You don't have to do it, but you ought to, because I think you ought to. So it's like should, but the difference is that ought to is the weakest form of obligation. It's really 
my personal opinion that no one else may have, right? Okay. I think everyone, uh, I think everyone ought to visit Iceland at least once in a life. <laughs> it's my per <clears throat> my personal opinion. I don't think everyone wants to go to Iceland, but I think everyone should because it's a very beautiful country. It's just my personal opinion. Should you visit Iceland? No. I don't I suppose that you should. Do you have to? You certainly don't have to. Must you? No. But if it's my personal opinion and it's subjective, you ought to. Okay, so Yuki, what was the decision that we made for the first card in the last class? What did we decide to do? Uh, I, I don't remember. I, mean, I, I, I selected to uh, the, I selected to uh, to keep your call center in the UK. Keep the call center in the UK. So I. That's what you selected. Is, is it correct? <laughs> I think I, I, I selected A, uh, but other stu student. <clears throat> I think you got. I think you got outvoted. Uh, I think we went to card two, so I think we we opted to investigate more fully the costs. Am I right, Monica? Then we 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 chose B and we went on to card two. Isn't the thing that? Is, um, I I I had or to we go, go to before, so I I don't uh, know okay. the. Research. Okay, so let's decide now. Are we keeping the call center, or? Are we going to investigate the costs more fully? So, are we keeping the call center in the UK, or are we going to consider outsourcing to India? Maybe I keep keep the call center in the UK. Well, Anton, if you disagree, you've just been outvoted because Yuki and Monica have decided to keep the call center. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Anton? Mm, I disappointed a bit. What's that? I'm disappointed a bit. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> you've, you've been outvoted. <laughs> but you'll have a chance to. You'll have a chance now, Anton. Let's look at card number six. And what I want you to do is read it, tell us your options, and give us your opinion using the second conditional of the results of each decision. What would, could, should, or ought to happen? So, could you read card six for us, Anton? Yes, sure. Uh, shareholders complain that you are less profitable than rival banks. They are still putting pressure on you to cut costs. You decide to A, please share shareholders by closing some less profitable branches. Go to 9B, organize a newspaper campaign explaining to the public why you want to keep the call center jobs in the UK. Right, so, so this means we've kept the call center but now we have a problem. Our shareholders are starting to complain because we're a bank and the shareholders of the bank are complaining that they're not making any money. So Anton, what do you think, well, what do you think would be the result of pleasing the shareholders by closing some of the less profitable branches of the bank? What do you think the result would be? I think lots of people could lose their job, jobs. Lots of people could lose their jobs. So to, we have another choice. We could organize a newspaper campaign, a marketing campaign, explaining to the public why we have to keep the call center jobs in the UK. In other words, why we have to spend more money. And what do you think would, could, or should be the result of having a marketing campaign, Anton? Maybe shareholders would complain even more because this will increase really? our costs <laughs> uh, even higher. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. It will increase. It, it would increase but, our costs, but maybe uh, on the other hand, uh, yeah. it would uh, it will uh, make our public it image will? better. Wait, 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 wait. It, it, it will. Would, it would. It would. It ah, would. okay. It, it would improve our public image. Yes, and it would uh, attract some uh, clients because of it. Interesting. And why do you think it would attract clients? Uh, maybe they would uh, vote for uh, our uh, attitude to uh, importance of unemployment problem in UK with their money. Mm, okay, so they would perhaps open accounts with us because 
they think that we are sensitive to to important issues and the the economy is bad everywhere in the world so we could maybe pick up some business because people think that we're more ethical than other yes. banks oh okay i see well monica and yuki what do you think about anton's ideas do you think that he's on the mark with these these are the results that could happen or is he forgetting anything just out of curiosity since we already decided to keep keep our call center in the UK, I think we 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 have to continue our our policy uh, uh, in spite of of the uh, disagreement by by the shareholders. So I do I would do, I would select the B organize the newspaper. Newspaper campaign. It's the same as the tactic, same of the tactics uh, which which now in term Ukraine, Ukraine in term uh, government by in in Kiev uh, have taken. So appeal to the world. <laughs> uh, appeal to the world. Yes. So, so listen, using the second conditional, we should appeal to the world. We should, we should appeal. appeal to the world, hmm. uh, uh, and uh, and and we we have to convince uh, public uh, of our de of of uh, that our decision is correct. Well, uh, pu well, Putin also appealed to the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just he now, just yeah. now he. He is giving another give way. A speech in the parliament just now. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, wanted, I wanted to watch, watch the television, but I des decided I decided to join your class. <laughs> I think you'll learn more in this class, actually. After but, the class, I, I learn. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Putin had his own way of <laughs> his own his own marketing campaign too. So yes, yes. different different kind of marketing. Uh, well, Monica, I think it's up to you. Are you going to be? Are you? Is this a unanimous vote, or do you think we ought to really consider closing profitable branches? Monica, I think um, the B. We should organize a newspaper campaign explaining to the public. Wow! So this is unanimous. Mm. Yes, thank you. Well, for you are agree. <laughs> Listen, Monica, if you use the second conditional, you would say, well, I think it would be best. Would be best. Repeat. Would be best. Would be best. That's the second conditional. So you can agree by also using the second conditional. I think it would be best if we organized, in the past, a newspaper campaign. So that would be the form in the second conditional to agree. I think it would be best if we organize a, a newspaper campaign because we've already began that particular way of solving the problem. Okay, sounds good to me. I would choose the same actually. We're going to go on to four. Where is four? Four is down here. Okay, so Monica, you're going to you're going to do four for us. Let me get it on screen. Okay, what is the result of our decision, Monica, for number four? The newspaper has run a campaign praising you as the patro patriotic bank. This is a good <laughs> yeah. for you, your image, but means that your hands could be tied in the future. Return to first or end here. <laughs> Right, we have to decide. It is similar to the situation in Ukraine. <laughs> we, so we either have to go back to step one, where we have to decide again if we're gonna if we're gonna cut the jobs or not, or we we end the game here and we've won. I guess we've won. The newspapers run. We are the patriotic campaign. The shareholders, I guess, they're okay with that. This is good for our image. So Anton gets what he wants. We maybe pick up some new business. So we may have won the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what uh, happens. We won the game. Uh, apparently, because it but says we can. 
Well, no, I don't think we lost because look, we we came out looking well, good. No, no such a difference. But look, no. let's let's see what happens if we go back to square one. Let's go back to square one for a minute here. What happens if we if we investigate costs more fully, and we go on to number two? Yuki, what? Let's take a look at the alternative. What happens okay. if we do decide? Remember, we haven't decided to move we our center to the, into India. No, we we haven't decided to move them. We're just investigating okay. further. Just investigating. What what I do you think? Okay, if you close the UK call centers, uh, thousands of jobs will be lost. You do not want to cause unnecessary panic because you are still at the in investigation stage. You decide to a be open about your plans. B, keep your plans confidential for the moment. Okay, so Yuki, you're going to summarize this using the second conditional because we're having a business meeting. So you're going to start by saying, if we were to, and then see if you could just summarize this information. If we were to do what? If you, if we as a company, if we were to. So you're just summarizing now. Okay. If we were to close, if you, if you close to, if we were to close, uh, if we, uh, if we, uh, we were, if we, we were to close, close that center, what would happen? Uh, if uh, it it uh, the panic, the panic attack would be happen. It, so uh, <laughs> among uh, among uh, work, local workers. So let's change that a little bit. If we were to close the call center, there might be there might be oh. uh, a panic among the workers. Oh, well, not only just among the workers, among everyone. There might be a, a there might be a uh, a panic. How do they say it here? They say uh, duh, 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 duh. there might be unnecessary panic. Okay, let's put it like that. There if might we, be un we were no. to close the UK call centers, uh, there might be there unnecessary might be unnecessary panic. Hang on one second here. There, you can see it in the chat window. Yeah, there might be unnecessary panic. Okay. So Yuki, what do you think we should do to avoid the unnecessary panic? Do you think it's better to be open or to be secretive? Uh, uh, as I as I mentioned in previous class, mm -hmm. I I think uh, I think uh, it, it I think we it's better to open about everything uh, uh, about every policy uh, of our company. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if, even if you even if if you uh, want to keep your plans confidential, mm -hmm. uh, someone mm -hmm. would be the insider. Outside, uh, would be the uh, Snowden <laughs> inside. Uh, how to would say? be the oh, we got a good word the, for this. Wait, 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 wait. We got a good word for this. We would be the would be wh whistleblower. Whistle blower, like like this. Just look in the chat window. Uh, whistle blower. Right. Yes. <laughs> we, <laughs> so some someone someone would uh, yes someone would be whistle blower. Someone would would disclose uh, our our secret. Someone right. would reveal it uh, to many people. Right. Mm. Anton, do you think that's a risk that we should take? That someone may blow the whistle on us if we're secretive. Do you think it's a risk we should take, or do you think we should uh, just be confidential? And and because I'm saying, if we are secretive, no one has to know about anything, and we can see what the results are. What do you think, Anton? Anton, turn on your microphone. Can hear you, Anton. Are you Hello? there? There Hello? you go. Uh huh. 
Uh, I think, uh, yes, we should be confident and secretive uh, and to, in order to investigate this question furthermore. Do you think that it's worth the risk of someone blowing a whistle on us? Do you think it's worth the risk? I think yes. But if someone blows the whistle, we're going to look really bad. Just look at how the United States government looks after Edward Snowden. It doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? I if, think if that, that we, we are not up. collecting someone's personal data in order to uh, investigate them. We are only trying to make better business decision. Okay. So and you business think business is risky by its nature. Uh, that's true. That's a good point. Business is absolutely risky. And Monica, um, do you think that if we're do you think that if we're open about our plans, it'll cause a huge panic? So we we better do what Anton is suggesting, or do you disagree, Monica? I, I think um, uh, we uh, were open about if we were, were open if we were open about. Our plans. Uh -huh. um, uh, the panic would uh, come. Would happen just later. <laughs> oh, it would happen later. Uh, yeah, uh, we are come. But if if uh, we kept uh, our plans confident, uh, mm -hmm. I think um, the panic uh, would come later. It will come, but just later. So somebody. Um, uh, we'll know about the plan and it will come the whistle blower. <laughs> so, so there's going to be panic in either case, but if we're secretive, then we can delay it a bit. Is that, was that the idea? Yes, yes. Well, it sounds like it's, it's two to one against Yuki, so it looks like we're going to be secretive. Okay, let's see what happens. So we're going to go down to 15. Let me scroll this over. 15. Okay, Monica, let's see what happens. Can you read this one for us? Yes. Someone has leaked the story about the India plans to the uni Union. Uh-oh, whistleblower. Uh-oh. <laughs> now we're in trouble. Uh-oh. Go ahead, Monica. You are attacked in the press as an exporter of British jobs. You decided to... Uh, A, deny, 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 deny everything and go ahead with the plans in the secret. B, open up negotiations with the union. Monica, do you understand what they mean here by the word union? Is that clear? What union uh, is? United Kingdom. UK. No, 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 no. Union uh, here is the, is the syndicate of workers. The syndicate of workers. The bank workers union. The syndicate. Uh huh. What's your What's your native language, Monica? Um, what is your mother it. tongue, Monica? Servizet. Where are you from, Monica? Hungary. Oh, right, 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 Hungary. Okay, never mind. I can't translate union into Hungarian. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, never mind. I can't translate it. I was going to say... Hungarian uh, developed develop the language, so it is very different from another, yes, another so. language in use, uh, usage, in structure, in grammar. So, the word union, I don't know how it translates into Hungarian, but this means... The bank workers join an organization that protects their rights. Yeah, this yeah. is a union. Okay. Is that clear, Monica? Yeah, yeah it's okay. clear, yes. So, okay. So, so we got in trouble, Anton, <laughs> because <laughs> it's, it's not personal data that's been leaked, but still it's data or information that is of great concern to the union. Because they're trying to protect the job. So what do we do, Anton? What do we do now? I think we should open up negotiations with the union and uh, uh, 
explain them that we were trying to protect uh, most of our employees. By the uh, way, you can't you can't explain them. You can only explain something. Something. If you uh, say tell, we can say tell them. Uh -huh. But tell tell is different than all the other words in the English uh -huh. language. You always tell somebody, but you explain something. So say that again. Without um, without them. We should open up negotiations with the union uh, and explain the importance uh, of our responsibilities uh, uh, for all of our employees. Okay, and okay, good. We are trying to save more jobs by uh, cutting costs. Okay, so in other words, if we hadn't move the call center we would in fact lose more jobs so this is a is this is like a preventative medicine that's what you want to tell the union is that the idea yes exactly hmm. all right yuki do you agree with anton do you think it's better to be yes, open or I should we just yes deny i agree everything? just no no we didn't do this it's a lie maybe we should just lie should we lie yuki <laughs> you know, I, Let's lie. I, I want to lie. <laughs> I think we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, say a lie. We shouldn't lie. Uh, I I respect the open policy and open policy is now uh, is a main mainstream nowadays became mainstream uh, in in taking decision in many companies nowadays. So uh, now uh, now 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 our secret has been revealed. Uh, someone has leaked our 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 confidential information. Now we can we can take we can we can see see the we we have to we have to see the uh, result of our decision mm -hmm. uh, seriously, and we have to open up negotiation with the union. It is what? just one. Selection. Well, let's see, let's see wow. what happens if we do that. We got we've got to finish up in just a minute, but let's see what the result is. Let me find number eleven here. Uh, where is eleven? There we go. It's up at the top. Okay. Let's go to the top. Oh, that's too big. Hold on. There we go. Number 11. Okay, Yuki. So, tell us what the result is. Your negotiations with the union have reached to a crossroads. The union want, want to, the union wants to reduce UK job losses to a minimum. You decide to A. Keep just 150 UK course UK call center jobs, UK call center jobs, and risk a strike. B. Keep 400 UK jobs, which will satisf satisfy the union. So we have to decide if we should give in to the union demands, or if we should just make a little gesture. Say, okay, we understand your point. Look, you can keep 150 jobs. Or we give in to their demands, we keep 400 jobs. We don't really cut a lot of costs. Things, things, deteriorate, things, de things are deteriorating things more are and more. Going to hell in a handbasket, exactly. Yes. <laughs> what did you say? Going, going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, could you write it down? <laughs> going to hell in a hand basket. basket. Take a look. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a song by the Grateful Dead which has the chorus going to hell in a bucket baby. <laughs> I th what song is that? I uh, think. Touch of Grey. I think it's Touch of Grey. Going to hell in a... I don't remember. Going to hell in a Bucket Baby. I'll see if I can find the song. Because the, the lyric is, I may be going to hell in a bucket, baby, but at least I'm enjoying the ride. So, <laughs> uh, we've got one final decision to make. We're out of time. 
so we got to make a good decision here. Are we giving in to the union, or are we going to try to hold strong and cut costs? I don't know. I I think I I, I we we should do, we should do, avoid the risk of strike. So now now we 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 have to keep four hundred UK jobs. Maybe. Okay, so Yuki wants to give in. But Anton, are we giving in? No, we don't. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you Give have the a finger to the union. There you go, union. Who cares about you? You have a heart. Monica, are we, <laughs> are we giving in or not? Yes. We are giving in. Oh, that's that's two to one, Anton. You've been outvoted, <laughs> two to one. Okay, this is our last. Where's fourteen? This is our. Okay, there you go, Anton. Let's see what the results are before time runs out. Last, last card. Why 14? Why not 5? Because it said... Did I, did I do the wrong one? It said... Oh, 5. Yep, you're right. Sorry. Sorry. You're right. Let me see if I can find 5. Hold on. I lost now you five. have... Should I read it? Wait, wait. i got to find 5. Hold on. Wait, where did it go? 5, 5, 5. There it is. It's down here. Okay. Let's now you have solved the union problems. The call center is going ahead. However, UK customers say they are often communication. There are often communication problems with the Indian-based call handlers. <laughs> they, to speak, they speak a special kind of English there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, help you. So people are having. Tr this is this is actually a common problem with call centers when you outsource, is that people are speaking their local dialect of English, and some customers get a you know get angry with this. Uh, or they may not. They may not have. With India, I don't see what the problem is with India. But in some places, they have non-native speakers handling calls, and they don't understand everything. So, with India, I don't see what the problem would be. But okay, apparently there are problems. So, we we got into a bit of trouble. We solved the problem with the unions, but now we have a communication problem. Uh oh. <laughs> so, what are our choices? Should I read? Yes, please. A. Uh, ask senior management to invest more money st in staff training. Go to 3. B. Send a letter to customers explaining the need to set up it in, in India. Go to 7. Ooh. So we either got to increase our cost <laughs> after, after keeping some of the jobs. We either got to increase our cost more or try to apologize to the customers. Well, we're out of time, so <laughs> this is our last decision. What do you think we ought to do? Because we're three minutes over time, and I have another class that are waiting for me. What's our last decision? Last decision, everyone. Um, Apologize or increase the budget and train the staff? Why not both? I don't know. I think, I think we can. Well, <laughs> I, would, I would select the A. Ask senior uh, to, uh, to uh, spend more money in, in staff training because uh, such a such a uh, such a low quality of service uh, cannot be continued in the future. Cannot be continued in the future. So it all the same. Uh, staff training is needed. Hmm. Okay, Monica. Uh, we are already in trouble, so. <laughs> I would ask senior management to invest uh, more money. <laughs> can't be worse than what it is. Anton? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know. I'm voting for both, but let it be A. All right. So let's see the final result here. Let's see if we've won or lost. Oh, look at this. Number, there's what, three, right? Yeah, three. three. There we go. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. Okay, Monica, and tell us what the result is. Can you see it? Uh, yes. The India call center is now a success. And Hooray! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and complaints have dropped. However, however an Indian worker now costs a third as much as a UK worker, and soon will cost half as much. You will not now have to look for a cheaper alternative or think of other places where cost might be cheaper. 
Oh, well, we survived. Uh, yes, we we made the cut. We made the cut. We haven't lost our jobs, and that's what's important, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, thank you everyone for playing, and don't forget if you want to review anything, we've got the conditionals there on page three. Um, I have homework for this as well, which I gave you once, but if you want a copy, I'll tell you what, let me post a copy in the chat window. The homework we've done together, but if you want a copy for yourself, I'll post a link right now in the chat window So when the class ends. And by the way, if you want to get in touch with me for any reason, you can always do so at the links in the chat window, which you can see right there. And tomorrow we're going to begin a new unit. I think it's on innovation. So all sorts of vocabulary for innovation. We'll be inventing something in the class. And uh, I have no idea what else. I don't remember. But anyway, it's about innovation. So don't go to hell in a handbasket. And I'll see you tomorrow at the same hour. You too. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Take care. See you. See you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.